Who do we have? Who do we have next? Yeah, that's, oh, that's the big man. question. Uh, this one, this one, I've been unsure about actually since the beginning, and you know, I don't know if it's actually going to be a great interview. Um, Could be a little sketchy. You I know, think. we had to fill spots, and we brought this guy on. <laughs> we felt uh, bad for him, I think. What? I think I think we felt bad well, for I him a little bit. I feel bad for him in general, but <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> Not the least of which is that he has to sit here and talk to us for a little <laughs> <Yeah>. while. <laughs> right. He's actually sitting here now. We're making fun. So let's, let's, uh, let's pick him up here. Yeah. So this is this is Hendrik Anderson from Sweden. From Sweden. And I right? must say thank you very much. This is the best presentation yeah. I ever got. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> People tend to be much worse than you guys. Right, right. The best, yeah. best intro yet, yeah. right? Right. They're so kind everywhere else. Exactly. We just roll right into it right away. Right. right. So, Henrik... Um, Test consultant, House of Test from Sweden. Uh, is there anything else we need to know about your background? I'm a decent chap. You, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I agree. It's uh, debatable, I think. Yeah, it yeah. just might be a little bit debatable. Yeah, how'd you get into testing, Henrik? By coincidence, I guess. Yeah? As usual, uh, in 98, I think, and looking for a first job, dropped out of uh, college, uh, and uh, wasn't too picky I guess yeah. <laughs> so uh, someone was throwing me money and I uh, said hell yeah hey, I'm here not? and uh, so I got into a med tech and a quality engineer there uh, and I had done some uh, in school about uh, ISO 9000 and those kind of stuff mm -hmm. so that's to me what was quality uh, what I didn't realize when I when I got there was that to them quality was testing yeah. so I, I got on a position as a quality engineer which basically made me do testing, uh, which I wasn't prepared for. I didn't know how to do it or anything, but it was a good two years, two and a half, I was there learning the craft. Uh, I mean, it wasn't too much testing in the IT industry going on at that time, mm -hmm. uh, and MedTech had, had quite a lot of regulation. So I enjoyed the time, but after a while I felt that, that uh, it was time to move on, and especially that's around 2000. We had a quite IT hype, and Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was quite a good startup that, company that, that had lots of money. Thing. So yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be with the cool guys. <laughs> 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 so uh, I, I sh that's when I changed and got become a, uh, in a consultant. Yeah, uh, I think that was actually my question. My next question uh -oh. was: What influenced you to become a consultant? I guess how, tell me about that transition. Yeah, how do you make the transition to from basically a, a private tester? Uh, uh, well, yeah. I don't know. What is the term for that? Into consultancy. Uh, is that uh, a word even? Consultancy? 40 hour week right. tester? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> 40 hour week <laughs> tester. Maybe 80? I mean, whoever. 80, 90? You know, so, so, yeah, what have a, uh, I guess that was, um, I think that was also a coincidence. I didn't mm -hmm. choose to be a consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a company who, um, looked for someone who, who had experience with testing. Uh, their customer were starting to ask about testing. They uh, also wanted, they had some product development, so they needed some quality assurance, as they call it then. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was a good market then, because not too many people actually had experience from, t from testing. And I had a couple of years then. So uh, I got responsible for, for, for the testing there and building up a test organization and um, I didn't know what consultant was it was just another cool company to work on yeah uh, and it happened to be a consultancy and uh, yeah. I tend to stick around for it uh, I love being a consultant yeah uh, nowadays and now I mean now you have your own company that's correct that's correct I've been running my own business now for three years we mm -hmm. are a small company yeah. seven people uh, in Sweden and we're on a small outsourcing site in Shanghai mm -hmm. uh, where we do basic context driven testing yeah and you can do that with an outsourcing company <laughs> by the way <laughs> it is possible it is possible there there are a couple room room. Yeah. right right I don't trust those outsources especially <laughs> from Sweden huh. No, because that's why we're from China. <laughs> ah! Oh, problem solved then, yeah. There you <laughs> go. Problem solved. There yeah. you go. Uh, ben, what do we have for him? So one of the things that um, I noticed the other day during your session, I wasn't able to attend, but I noticed a lot of activity in, in your session. I wanted you to talk a little bit about, one, what the contents of it were, mm -hmm. and then how it was different than, say, a typical session. Because I remember seeing all kinds of Post-it notes and all I mean, people hurrying around and 
what happened? What happened? Yeah, it was a pretty fun session. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a session that was slightly different than others. Uh, I've been cast uh, for like four or five times now. I kind of knew what, what the setup was, uh, and uh, I wanted to, do, to give another flavor to it. Uh, I had a, a session called Now, What's Your Plan? It was basically about uh, building a test plan for a cool device that we had developed, a product. Uh, it was actually a little toy robot. And uh, we gave them, the, we divided them up, the audience, in small teams. And uh, it was not a presentation where I showed a lot of slides. It's actually the team gets a simulation <laughs> and uh, they need to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, they got some context of w how this product was developed, which, what uh, the use is of it, which environment. And they uh, and I asked, now what's your plan? So they got to spend a couple of minutes discussing and talking and building up a, a plan for how they would like to test it. And they presented this. And uh, then they got some new information that the customer had changed his mind a bit. Threw, uh, threw a little twist at the Did them. a little twist. Yeah. and. What we, it was a context twist. We focused on the context. and mm -hmm. So they need to adopt the plan. Or may, maybe they need to adopt it. So that's up to them. S some information in it could just be information, but they, which didn't affect the plan. So they need to search and evaluate. Also, is it important? How important it, is it? What do we want to change? And we did some simulations. Uh, they, they got three uh, different uh, in, uh, types of information. And... Um, so to basically three context ch changes then. Uh, it was interesting. It was way more people than I expected. It was 60 <laughs> something there. I was happy with, with 20. I was expecting 40 maximum. So a bit of improvisation for, at first. I hadn't arranged to table for everyone, but it worked us really well, I think. Uh, also within this limited time, we need to squeeze it a little bit. Uh, I mm -hmm. wish I would had uh, uh, more time for debriefing. There are so many insights we got from this um, this session that we didn't debrief and didn't look into. But on the other, other hand, since this was a kind of different uh, session than others, I didn't want people to invest too much time if it's the first time they are mm -hmm. exposed to an experimental simulation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted them to have a low investment and not spending a whole day tutorial and finding out after an hour that they don't like it. Um, so now they've tried it, and hopefully uh, they are engaged and want to try more of it and sign up for, for uh, something longer next time. So was this w the format? I mean, like Ben was saying, you walked by and saw tables and post-its and all this stuff. It w was there like a, a open season at the end, or was it all kind of more? Um, we had an open season for uh, 10 minutes, I think, at mm -hmm. the end. Uh, mm -hmm. That what we, we were really, really aiming for an open season, but we knew that we will have a time constraint. And we can't have a full open season that is 25 minutes, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we knew that it will be shorter, but it, I think it's important to have an open season. That's one of the, I think, great things about CAST, that we prioritize this and we let everyone participate. Uh, many other conferences, the speaker goes on and he goes till the end and no chance for mm -hmm. any feedback or questions at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and and many times in, the, in these sessions, I see the, the, it's the uh, open season that actually uh, brings value. The presentation itself is a trigger for everyone, and then you hear all these cool things during the open season. Mm -hmm. That is something that CAST is unique with. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that you would throw a context twist at them. Yes. Could you give us an example, without giving away all the secrets, of course, of, yeah. of what that, you know, how did you start, what was their context when they started, and then what was the twist? Uh... For instance, we could say that uh, you get this robot. So you have the actual device that you see. So mm -hmm. by that, you just uh, build a model of that. Oh, this is probably how it works, right? And uh, we give them information that, that could be that this, is, uh, this customer is a research in institute, for instance. Mm -hmm. So research institute, maybe you're starting to think like professors, mm -hmm. high levels, mm -hmm. high, high skilled. Uh, these are real uh, top-notch people. Uh, and when you find out 
later on it might be uh, research of uh, blind people, for instance, oh. that gonna use it. So mm-hmm. they have disabled that we didn't know of. Uh, maybe they are blind and uh, uh, old, and uh, so they're not working. So this is could be new technology for them as well, and all this. So, so we try to flip the, them around, but not changing the context in a way that oh now it's this product and now the next thing is completely different mm. we want to mm-hmm. be aligned so we're just basically building it and I, I guess that's in my product it's like this we 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 get a start of product we think we know what we're gonna do we start we learn mm-hmm. we experience we get feedback from the customer oh it wasn't that what we thought in the beginning so we need changes right and at the end if you look at the first day of a product and last day of a product product it most likely isn't the same. Yeah, it, gets, uh, it can be different, very exactly. different. Exactly, and, yeah. and, and speaking of context, it's really, really hard to know what is our context. Hmm. And and it's always changing. And we have some context that is visible, that is up in your face, basically. But then we have other context that is really, really subtle, and but could have a major impact if it changed. And uh, the only thing about context is when we think we know what it is, we have missed quite a bit, I think. So we need to always continue working and be aware and open for context changes and have a process and a working practice that mm-hmm. is, doesn't put too much, too high overhead for, for context changes because mm-hmm. we know they will occur. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the, one of the things that I was wondering about as you're talking about this and the, the the, the plot twists as they were, mm-hmm. were there any kind of tip, uh, not typical, but struggles? I mean, what what did people stumble on when they were trying to assess I their shift? I would say shift? the most stu- struggle they have was that they couldn't ask questions to the customer. Oh, uh, they yeah. got what they oh. got in information, I, hmm. and then there were no customer there. Uh, so it's basically like we sending you uh, in a, s- a specification for them. Do you, think, and, and do you think testers get access to the customer in general? In n- not in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we ha- often have a, a, a quite hard tr- problem finding out w- what the real customer is. Mm-hmm. W- what is the d- pattern of use? Who is going to use it? And it's really crucial and very often very valuable information for us to do a good job in, in some kind of testing that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and often we we get the information second hand, third hand uh, instead of actually hey, let me have a meeting and sit down with the customer instead and maybe invite the customer to our testing and pair test with them. Right. Uh, and get uh, tighter involvement. So, I mean, we have a couple more minutes with you, Henrik. Um what did you think of the conference? I mean, you've, you've been going to these for a couple of years now, right? For, uh, I think, four years and speaking for the last three years. Last three, that's really so, good. So, uh, obviously, I like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a uh, little bit. Even that you are here, Tim. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, well, nice. I appreciate you being here. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You do. <laughs> so, no, I love it. I, I love the, uh, the community. I love the feeling of the conference. Everyone yeah. is really tight there it's open yeah. it's not much pride or uh looking down to ad- on other people we mm-hmm. are w- everyone is approachable and everyone is really friendly and in- taking interest in each other yeah uh, we have lots of fun yeah. drink lots of we- wine and beer <laughs> uh, that drink lots of what what <laughs> just yeah. a little bit yeah. there yeah what, what are you holding there, there. there we go. Yes, of course <laughs> <laughs> it won't dry out you that's know? right no. so <laughs> Uh, and and I mean the, the, the speaker lineup is yeah. incredible yeah. all the years. It's comparing to what it costs to get there. Uh, I mean it's it's just awesome. I'm having such a blaster every year. Yeah. So say we had it in you know somewhere in California, maybe like Silicon Valley. Would you would you come next year? <laughs> <laughs> would I? <laughs> of course, Silicon Valley. I expect Valley. to see you here. Yeah. yeah. Next year. As, as long as it's not worse weather than Sweden. I will be no, here. No, it shouldn't be. I, I, I think be. you'll be all right. Oh, you think? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit further <laughs> south from here, yeah. Yeah, I, I will do good. I would love to go to yeah. Bay Area, definitely. Yeah. Never been there. would be a great experience. Yeah. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you for... Uh, thank you, Henrik. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was fun.